In this video, we want to look at rate law expressions and what they tell us about a reaction. So we're studying kinetics and how fast reactions happen. So let's say we have this reaction here, 2A plus B goes to 3C, and we want to describe quantitatively how our reaction rate could change, what variables would affect it. We know some of those, pro those variables that affect reaction rate are things like concentration, temperature, adding a catalyst, uh, the uh, surface area of a heterogeneous reaction, right, these different variables that affect our reaction rate. So we want to quantitate these. And we do that by taking our reaction and we're going to say our rate of reaction is equal to the variables that will affect this reaction rate. So over here is going to describe everything that affects our reaction rate. So we're going to have our rate constant and then it's going to be multiplied by the concentration of our reactants to some power. Okay, and we'll describe what each of these pieces are. So this is first off our reaction rate, not the rate with respect to A or the rate with respect to B or the rate with respect to C, but the actual reaction rate for our whole reaction. Okay, so it's important that we identify this specifically talking about our reaction rate because we don't want to have to describe a rate constant specifically to A or specifically to B or specifically to C. We want to look at it for our overall reaction. So we have, this is our rate law expression. Each of these pieces describes certain aspects of uh, our rates dependence. So first off here we have our concentration. So this part here is going to help us define the reaction rate dependence on those concentrations. So the concentration of A or concentration of B. Now these variables here, M and N, and we just arbitrarily call them M and N, we could call them X and Y, Z, uh, B, whatever we want to. We define these as the order of those reactants. Now the order, what this does is this tells us how much does the rate depend on the concentration of that specific reactant or pro, uh, of that specific reactant. So if we have a reactant A, if this is zero, the order is zero, that means that there's going to be no effect on uh, the rate on the change in concentration of A. If it's first order, M is one, that would mean that it would be a one-to-one -one relationship of I uh, increase the concentration by twofold, my rate would double. Whereas if M is two, that would give us an exponential relationship or squared. I would double the concentration, my rate would be four times faster. Okay, so we see there's this distinction between order and what it tells us about the dependence of my reaction rate on the concentration of that specific reactant or product. Okay, and importantly here, we're going to define these from experimental data. Okay, so we can't just look at our reaction and say, well, for A, the coefficient is two, so therefore it's two. Okay, so that has nothing to do, per se, with the coefficients of my overall reaction. Now let's bring it into this description of, of our rate constant. So we mentioned all these different variables that affect our reaction rate. One of them is concentration. All the other variables are built into our rate constant. Okay, so what our rate constant tells us is it tells us the rate's dependence on things like temperature, activation energy, whether or not there's a catalyst, the surface area, if it's a heterogeneous reaction. All right, so we see that all these variables are built into the rate constant value. So we see, well, it's def definite dependent on temperature, that means that our uh, temperature is going to change our K value, okay? Uh, it's also dependent on the nature or the chemical properties of our reactants. So how much do they want to combine and react and form our products, okay? So we can, we can look at an expression, mathematical expression, that helps us look at all the variables that affect our rate constant, okay? And so what we'll see is that our rate constant is equal to AE to the negative activation energy over RT. Okay, this is called the Arrhenius equation. It's giving us the ability to relate our rate constant, this A, and we'll define what that is, our activation energy, which we'll really describe in a later video, uh, the R value, which is a, the ideal gas constant 8.314, and then temperature, okay? 
So let's go ahead and describe each of these different pieces. Okay, so first off we have A. Okay, A here, what we'll see is that A is our frequency factor. Okay, and we think, well, what does that mean? This has to do with uh, the number of effective collisions, how many collisions, based upon the chemical properties or nature of our reaction. Okay, so we see that this kind of idea, the nature of our reactants is built into this frequency factor, or the ability for the reactants to collide with each other and lead to a reaction. The rest of this, activation energy, is also integrated and related to the nature of our reactants. So what energy is required that they must get above uh, in order for them to lead to forming products? And then we see the temperature dependence here. Okay, so if we increase our temperature, that's going to make this value e to the negative of that value much smaller, and so that's going to give a much larger, and that's going to give us a higher k value. So we see increasing temperature, it's going to make this smaller, which makes our overall rate constant value higher. Okay, so we see our Arrhenius equation gives us the ability to, through an equation, bring out the concepts about the variables that affect our reaction rate, which are all built into our rate constant. Okay. So if we're looking at well, what would affect our rate constant, what makes it constant? Well, we've got to be at a specific temperature, looking at a specific reaction. So if I change what the reaction is, that's going to affect what the rate constant is. And our frequency factor also is dependent on um, the nature of the reactant. So we change what's reacting, it's going to change uh, what that frequency factor is. But we note that the concentration component's only built into this section. All those other variables we pack into our rate constant. And so we see our rate law expressions now give us the ability to quantitatively express the relationship between our reaction rate and what, what variables will affect that reaction rate. And this is a, a reminder these variables of like M and N and K must be determined experimentally. So hopefully this gives us a good background information about rate law expressions. Uh, in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to see how do these rate law expressions relate to something we call integrated rate laws and its relationship between concentration of our reactants and time, how they change over time.